And finally, after over 20 days of discussion and negotiation between the ruling and opposition blocs, the nation's parliament has passed a special act to help the thousands of real estate fraud victims in South Korea. Our Lee si hoo tells us more. South Korea's National Assembly at its plenary session on Thursday voted to pass a special act supporting the victims of the recent spate of real estate rental fraud that swept across South Korea. The act would make way for no-interest long-term loans for a portion of the losses incurred, as well as postpone or stop the auction of affected properties and give the victims priority rights to purchase the properties. Prior to Thursday's voting, the ruling and opposition blocs engaged in multiple negotiations to come up with the agreed bill that passed 243 to 5 with 24 abstentions. After its implementation expected on June 1st, the special act will take temporary effect for two years with a possible extension. But the victims themselves, however, have criticized the bill, saying that it only adds to their current accumulated debt, calling for further relief. Meanwhile, the parliament unanimously passed a motion requiring public officials to report all virtual assets they own, regardless of the amount. The lawmakers also vowed to self-report their virtual assets. The parliament resolves to self-report the status and histories of virtual assets to relevant agencies from the beginning of the lawmaker's term to now. These legislations are motivated by the ongoing controversy over Representative Kim nam alleged massive investment in cryptocurrency. Also on Thursday, the revisions to the Immigration Act and the Act on the Immigration and Legal Status of Overseas Koreans passed with an aim to introduce mobile ID cards for non-Korean nationals and Koreans living overseas. This will mean non-Korean citizens can carry a mobile version of their residence cards. Lawmaker Jong, who introduced the bill, said this would make life easier for some 1.6 million long-term foreign residents in South Korea. Yi Shi-hoo, Arirang News.